today's session, I would like to discuss on functions. So far, we have learned fundamentals of programming, such as uh, variables, statements, uh, loops, control loops, if statements, and so on. So, what are these functions? Functions are a block of codes. So we, so far, when you want to write a program, we wrote it as a single program from in the main method or the main function. So in our programs, in other words, in our programs, so far we had only main function. So when a C program starts, it starts execution from the main. Oops. So in the main function, remember we use some function such as printf scan. Printf scan are the standard library functions. So those functions, we these those functions for our lives, we included in our program using what we call as into CDIO statement on the top. They they are called preprocessing statements. Right. So it basically a C program is a collection of functions. So we can write several functions in a single file or in separate files. So those functions can call each other. By dividing our problem into the function, we can reduce the complexity of the problem. So similarly, we can test those problems easily, plus we can uh, kind of we can uh, code it easily. We can reuse those functions again in case some other other program in case in other, in case other program requires the same features. We could reuse these functions. Dividing our problem into the functions always a better uh, programming uh, practice. Good programming practice. As I mentioned, in C programming, there are two kind of functions we can see. In the first category, we call it as standard library functions. In the standard library functions are the functions already written to us by the previous developers. So those are called it as library functions. If you want to use some of these functions, we have to include they are function prototypes into our programs. So we did it using include directories. So in addition to these standard library functions, standard functions, we can have our own user-derived functions. In the user-derived functions, we have to implement, we have to declare and implement in our source code. So in this lecture, we're going to learn how to write our own user-derived functions. For example, if you want to kind of like create a circle on the terminal or to calculate the area of the circle or to find the color of the circle, we can have a function called create circle or kind of find color like that. So usually we divide function into the smallest as well into a code small as, as possible so our code block need to be very short so if the code block is getting larger a particular function so we have to think about how to divide it further with small set of lines or kind of few code lines or few so when when we study the type of the functions user defined functions we can see the functions which may not take any inputs to them. So, and also it may not return anything out of this function. So, then there are some functions which might take inputs but don't return anything. Then there are some functions which take inputs and which return something out. Like that, we can see different combinations of the functions. The functions are, <clears throat> functions may take inputs and produce, may take, produce outputs. Some functions may not take any inputs and may not produce any outputs. 
but there are some programming languages you may learn later on for it has functional programming so those functional programming languages usually we take inputs and it returns outputs so such functions we call it as PO functions in the C program we can have PO functions and we can have what we call it as recursive functions and the functions in any other forms So let's see how functions works. So in this, you see there is a program and there, there is a function called void function name. And then we have main function here. So the program execution start from the main function. So it will execute the main program. And somewhere here, you see it calls the function which defines on top. So for example, what's happened so program start from int main need to execute a statement in there one after other and then it execute the function name so when it executes that the program execution jump to the top of this function so then it will execute the statement inside that block one by one so then after it reach the end of that function it returns back to the line just after the function. So it's something like jump to some code and do some action and then return back to the execute uh, the place where we stop the execution. So, so for example, here there is a function called function name, program start execution here, and it goes down here. And when you see this state uh, function name, it's jump there and execute the code blocks which is under this function and then return back to the place they saw. So that's how function works. So for example, so you see here I have a function called my print and inside of the, the function there is only one statement that is print a function that prints I go on UCSC on the terminal. Printf is the user defined library function. My print is the printf is the standard library function, and my print is the user defined function. So I define in the same source code. So here I define the main function here, and inside that you see I call the my print function. After that, I return zero. It then comes and end the program. So when the program runs, like here, I compile using GCC and i then i run the program like my print and then it executes starts here then it comes here and jump there and print this statement on the terminal like here i go on c and comes comes here and then return zero and solve the execution so that's how very simple function works so this simple function user defined function called my print may not take any inputs and also not take any outputs. So the inputs are given within this bracket. So the inputs we give to the function call it as arguments. And after the execution, we can return some values back to the caller. So return statement we use for that. But in this particular function, you may see there are no inputs and no outputs that mean no return statement. What are the advantages of function? Why we want to write a break our problem into the function? As we discussed, when you divide our problem into a function, it is very easy to understand, maintain, and debug this program. And also, these codes we written can be reused. Some functions can be used to solve some other problems. And if it is a larger, uh, if you see, if, if we have very large programs, that is not readable and easy to manage and uh, hard to manage and hard to debug. So always we must divide our problems into small modules or what we call it as small functions. So dividing that, we, we, we could write more readable, easy to manage, easy to debug programs. So the, if you divide like that into a function, that code can be reused by the other people 
plus that codes has less errors. So when you write a function, it is good practice to give the function prototypes on the top. It is called as function declaration. In the function declaration, what we do, we, give, we declare the name of the function, their input argument types, and output return type. So for example, there is a function declaration here given. So this is a function name, and within the bracket, we give the type of arguments we, we are going to pass, only the types. And then here we give the return types, what type of data it's going to return. That is called as function declaration. So for example, let's say I want to write a user defined function for add number, which take two integers and return the addition of these two. So then my function declaration, similar to this, it has the e, that is output return type, output type. This is the name of the function. And within the bracket, we have two integer inputs. So that's how we define the function, or we declare a function. After we declare a function, we need to define the function. We can define it like here. So for example, here I define the add number function. It takes two integers, x and y, and then it returns x plus y. So someone can call this function by passing two numbers to that. So these two numbers which passes assigned to x and y, and then these x and y will be added together and result will be returned from this particular function. So when you call a function, we have to pass arguments if that function needs them, need arguments. So the, the data we pass to the function will assign to the variable in the function header corresponding. So this, uh, the data we pass, we call it as function parameters. If you have two variables defined in this function, let's say a and b, and we pass the values one and two to this function. So one will be assigned to a, two will be assigned to b. So it's something like that. So we have here in the top, you see add number function. It takes two integer variables here. So this is function declaration. So after the declaration, we can define this function anywhere in our code. There is a no rule that we have to define it on the top. So but the function declaration to be, should be on the top. So after that, we can use that function anywhere in the code, plus we can define this function anywhere in the code. Right, so you see, I first defined my main function. So it uses that add number function by passing two variables called n1 and n2. So here I define my add number function. It takes two variables as inputs. So you see called int a and b. When I call that add number function, n1 will be assigned to a, n2 will be assigned to b. So that means value of n1 is copied to a, value of n2 is copied to b. So then a and b, the function will execute by taking this a and b. So after we complete the execution of any function, we have to return the result back. So in my previous example, like add number, it want to return an integer. So what it returns here, value of a plus b. So whatever return here from a function can be assigned to a variable. So like here, so when you call like sum assigned to add numbers, so then what's happened? The system will call add number with variable n1 and n2 that will assign to a variable called a and, a and b and execute the add number function. And the result of this execution will assign back to the variable called sum. 
written or statement usually terminate the execution of the function. At the termination, we can give the value which we want to pass back to the caller. So, so far, when we use main function, as you may understood, we return zero. That means we return the value zero to the caller. So in our example, so you see, I, I add number function, which take two integers, and here I return the result. Result is A plus B. So that result comes here and assigned to the sum. So here are the code examples. So here you see my add number function declaration, and this is my main method. It has two, three integers, A, B, C, and in there I ask the user to enter two integer values A and B. So after user enters A and B, it passes to that number function. And then it means the program execution jumps to this down. So then A value of A will assign to value of X, variable X, value of B is assigned to variable Y. So then it comes inside this function and inside the function it says, add x to y and then return the result. That means this function returns the addition of a and b. So that returning value assigned to the variable c. So in this statement, I am printing a, b, and c and return zero to the caller, that is to the operating system. So that's how the simple functions works. Similarly, I have a function here called f which converts Fahrenheit to the centigrade. So here I say I, it has two functions. This function f to conversion and then function print to print the value. So print the value of in Fahrenheit. So then what's happened here? I call function f with the centigrade value. The function f will return a Fahrenheit value. Then I pass that Fahrenheit value to the print function. So then print function will print the data on the terminal. So as you see, I can call a function inside the another function. So then what happened? The inner function will execute first and it returns some value. That value will pass us to the outer functions. Like that, we can call a function one inside other any number of times. Right, I think you got a basic idea about how functions works. And now let's try to solve some problems. And by solving those problems, let's try to understand how we can divide a problem into a particular functions. The problem we're going to solve right now here to find it out the area of a cylinder. So as you may understood, this area of the cylinder we can divide into two simple functions. To one, one to calculate area of the rectangle, that is the curved surface, and to calculate the area of the circle, that is top and bottom uh, surfaces. So, okay. So before I show that, uh, how to solve this problem, I will uh, show you uh, how these functions work in simple form, and then we move on to this problems which we going to uh, solve. Okay, here let's say some demo. Uh, so I think you can see my terminal and here and that at the terminal I have started my Docker GCC image. You can use any C compiler to run this program. You don't need to, it is not compulsory to use Docker. So in, in for simplicity I am using Docker image here. So there I start a simple program. Let's say hello.c. I want to write a program called hello.c. So first of all, I want to include, include stdio standard input out library. It's called stdio.h. That is uh, basically uh, the library which has standard basic input output uh, operations. So there I am writing very simple function. So I say 
it won't do and it won't return anything that means void and say it's print something the function name is print and it may not take any output so there are no no input and no output so since there are no output we call here void and inside the print so you see there are no input within the bracket so then i just want to print my name here i print it and say like here hello person after that to slash and that means go to the next line all right so that is my print function so then i have my main function program execution start from the main there what i do i call my print function like that so then i uh, return zero. All right. So this is my simple hello program. So I compile that, get compiled, and then I run it. You see, it goes hello person on the terminal. When I look back the functions, so you see in the main there are no printf. Instead of, instead of it called the print function, that is a user defined function on the top. So let's say I want to modify uh, this function, uh, or I want to let's say I want to write a function which uh, adds some numbers. So there I write a function which returns the integer and my function name I call it as sum and it may take integer for x and integer for y to the function. And after that it do x plus y x uh, plus y and also it returns that. Return x plus y. Right. So now let's see. I want to check my print function to get some value and print on the terminal. So there I say I take only some value and then I print it on the terminal. integer value d and print uh, so i say slash percentage d means it's integer and with new line then x return it print that so you see i have two functions now some function will add two numbers and then print function will print that print a number so i can call now like here if i want i can say int uh, int maybe let's say int uh, n equal sum that is my function 10 and 20 so i pass two parameters to some function and that will assign to the integer n so then i can print that n using my print function and then return so you see i call some function it add these two, return back and assign to it. Then I pass that end to print, and it goes there, print that end back, and returns here. So let's see how it works. I compile my hello program and run this a dot right? You see, it add to it. So that could write, write it in more shorter form, like that if you want. So I can call here like sum three and four like that. So one function inside other. So then the sum function I call with these two numbers. So it goes there, add them together, and returns the value 
returning value pass to print function that's in the next function here and then it prints the element terminal you see when i compile that it's compiled and I run that so i got the answer so that's how we can call from one function inside the other function so you remember I discussed the problem that is to calculate the uh, area of the cylinder. So if we want to calculate the area of the cylinder, we can divide into two, two problems. That is to calculate the area of the circle and calculate the area of the rectangle. So we can have two functions for that and then want to calculate the area of the cylinder. Okay, let's uh, try to uh, write a program called cylinder.c. So, so I have already one. Maybe I uh, remove that. Right? And then write it from the beginning. So then I first of all I need to include right then I need a function to calculate the area of the circle. So then I write a function called kind of C which take a radius R as the input and return the circle, area of the circle, that is uh, phi r squared, right? So I return, return, the, I check the value of phi at 3.14, then phi r squared. So this is my circle function. Similarly, I can define function for a rectangle to calculate the area of the rectangle. It takes x and y that is width and height and then returns the area of rectangle that is x multiply y. Right. My area of rectangle function is ready. So now I can implement my area of cylinder function. It has to take two inputs. One is the radius of the cylinder, R, and the other one is the height of the cylinder. So then, first of all, I need to calculate the area of the Circle. So I call my function c to do that by, by passing the r here. So that returns the circle value. There are two circles, top and bottom. So I have to multiply them together. Then I need to add an area of rectangle to that. So area of rectangle is width multiplied height. Height is given h. So then the width of this curved surface is parameter of the circle, that is uh, 2 phi, 2 phi r, right? Like that. Okay, so this is now area of cylinder. So I return it. I return it to the point. So that is my area of cylinder function. Okay, let's try to main main function which calling this. So I want to call uh, this cylinder function. So I can call like that. Cylinder 
radius is maybe five. Uh, the height is maybe let's say ten. So if I want to print that the result on the terminal, I can use printf function with slash d and then to new line uh, like that. So then the main function returns zero. That is my area cylinder functions look like. Let it come let me compile that. It has errors. Let's see what are they too few arguments to write. Okay, I made a mistake here. You see, a rectangle function will take two arguments. One is the uh, height, and then I need to put a comma. Other one is the width. Uh, width. That is too high. Yeah. Now it should be right. I compiled. And then it's compiled and then run it. So you see, I got the area of uh, cylinder. Actually, this area of cylinder is not always integers. Radius and the height is not always integers. So there might be decimal values. If so, we need to change all our integer parameters into the double to take floating point numbers. So if you want to have decimal values, we have to take integer parameters into double. So for example, a uh, rectangle may take two floating point numbers like that. And it should return then, not integer, double. Similarly, that should return double value, and these two are also double. Right. So then in the printf function, it returns a double value. So then I have to tell how many decimal places needs with f. So then I can pass radius as double value of the decimal. Uh, it's 5.2 like that and maybe 10.5. So now it accepts the floating point numbers. So I compile my cylinder program. Now it gets compiled and then it runs that. So you see, I get the decimal values, two decimal values. Right? 512.7 to what? Floating point places. Right? So then that is how we can divide. We can divide a problem. Our problem is how to calculate the area of the cylinder into the function. We divide into three different functions, small ones. Right. Now let's see some other problem. In my second problem here, I'm asking you to write a program to solve this. It says there is a company called XYZ which pays 150 per normal working hours and 75 per OTS. And it says employer works 40 normal hours and 20 working hours. And we want to calculate his take home salary. This company also takes 10% tax. So, how can I write a program to that? So, in order to calculate that, we need to find out, simplify this problem into a small functions. How many functions we can see there? 
maybe we can see first function to calculate his normal values. And there might be a second function to calculate his OT values. And then we can have a third functions to calculate his total income. And perhaps we can have another function to calculate his tax. And finally, we might have a function to calculate his take home salaries. Like that, this particular problem can be divided into so many small problems. Okay, let's see how we can write a, a program for that. I share back my uh, terminal and uh, I will write a new function a program called maybe income. Right? Uh, it takes maybe st or h and it should have now several functions. First function may be to calculate uh, his normal pay. His salary, we can say basic salary. Basic salary. In order to calculate his basic, I need to input how many working hours. So I say hours, he was H, and his basic is basically hours he works. How many rupees we pay? It's 150 according to the problem. So this is so and then basic function will return the is basic seller. So then I can write a function called OT to calculate this OT. It may take uh, one input parameter for H, that is how many OT hours it has per. And it returned then is 40 payment is 75 rupees per hour into the hours. hours. So that is his 40 function. Then I can calculate the, uh, I can define the function now for salary, which might take two inputs. That is, first is normal working hours, second is. 40 hours. So then his total salary is normal working hours, that is his basic salary with H1 plus his 40 with H2. With salary, I take H1 and H2. It return basic H1 and OT H2. Right. Okay. So then there might be some function which calculate tax. Tax function might take his income. In income and return the tax. Tax value is 10% from the income. Point one. Actually, all my parameters should be double. So, simplicity I am using integer there, but it's better we use double there. Right. So if someone wants to now calculate the take home salary, I can define a function called maybe take home, which take its only working hours, normal working hours and OT hours to H1 and H2, right? So then I, inside that, maybe I can calculate his salary first. So I create it like that, in 
salary is equal, I call a salary function. I say this is S, and call a function with H1 and H2. So it calculates the salary and assign to the variable called S. So after that, I can calculate his take home. Actually, his take home is salary minus tax. For tax function, I pass the salary. So then I return this. State form is basically S, that is salary, minus tax. Right. So these are the functions to solve this particular problem. How many functions? One, two, three, four, five. So you see each function has only one single line or one or two lines. So the function should be smaller as possible. Right. So this is my main function now. There, I just uh, want to, I want to print salary of particular person, take home salary of particular person. He works at 40 normal hours and 20 working hours. So you see, so like that. So this is how my tool programs look like. Let me save it and then I compile it. So it has several errors, okay. You don't, when you see those errors, you don't need to be panic. Go back to this and carefully check what's happened. So this is okay. This is also okay. Then I have a function of salary. Right. Basic uh, return H1 to I 150, and then there is a function T, it returns 75H, and then there are two input parameters for H1 and H2, and it passes basic. and OT and return that and then there is a function uh, for tax so okay here I miss the semicolon so then I have take form which calculates the salary and then tax my main method I call this function take on take on will call salary function and tax function. Salary function will call basic functions and OD functions. So that's how it's well, let me compile it now. Hmm. It says okay, I misspell return. So you see that here I misspell R E T U R N return. See, still it has errors. Uh, yeah, I also wrong. Okay. 
variable here income so income right so let's see now so you see when i compile that it takes undefined declaration so because of why it's so? Because this income function has so many other functions, when it get compiled, so the C compiler looking for function declarations. So far, we didn't do any function declaration, we just directly wrote the function. It is good practice to declare our functions on the top, saying the functions we are going to use. We are going to use a function called basic, right? It takes for integer. So that is function declaration of basic. And this is the function definition. So similarly, I can define a function called OT. It also takes integer as input. So my OT function definition is like that declaration. So then I do function declaration for salary. So I take two integer values like that. Right. So I have another function for tax. I have to declare that function as well. Then I have a function for take home. It take two integer inputs like that. So these are the my function declaration. So those functions I define here. So then I use a take home function here. So take home function use salary function and tax function. Then salary functions use OT function and basic function. So now let me compile the program. So it was it has still this uh, error. So you see I misspelled the function. Let me go back. My program it should be salary. Salary. The declaration is also salary. Now it should run. I compile. Now, so you, you see now it gets compiled. So it get, returns the take home salary. So you see. I, I define this big problem. I, I break down this big problem into a small set of problems. So those problems, then I code it using small functions. So functions call each other and solve the problem. Since I break down this into the small problems, you can easily identify errors, easily modify those, and so on. So, for example, in case if, let's say, it's a basic rates are changed, the only place I want to change here is maybe it's basic salary change 175 per hour. I can easily spot the place I want to change, like that. So, if some other program needs this, basic salary calculation, I can reuse that as well. So when you write a function, it is a good practice. First of all, you declare the function in like that, and then we define the function. So those function declarations, we can include, write it in a particular as header file. So that's how I 
we can we can input into the that header file we can input into the top. For example, this still SDDIO header file has the declaration of standard input output functions. We are including into the source program here like on the top. So here we are if you have like several function declarations, we can write those declarations in a separate file and that file we can include it here as well if you want. Or else we can write the same declaration and definition in the same source file. So you see I declare f5 functions and then I define those five functions and within the main function I use it. So that's how we can break down a problem into a small set of functions. In order to practice this further, I will uh, uh, give you uh, give you some problem. So where you have to write a C program for that. So when you want to write a C program for that, uh, you need to be carefully uh, divide that into a separate function. Let me show the problem what you want to solve. My third problem, what I would like to ask you to solve is this. So here, the problem is there is a movie theater where they sell the tickets. And if the ticket price is 115 rupees, so usually 120 people attend this performance. So then, so the owner of this theater did some research and found that if he decreased the ticket price by five rupees, the attendance will increase by 20. So for example, if the ticket price is 10 rupees, he get 140 attendance. If ticket price is five rupees, then he get 160 attendance like that. So similarly, if he increased the ticket price, his attendance, number of attendance will decrease. So, so for example, instead of 15 rupees, his, he changed the ticket price to 20, he noticed that he get only 100 attendance. If he further increase the ticket price into the 25 rupees, he get uh, 80 attendees like that. So, so he found that. So then he, he when, when, what we want to find it out, a best ticket price. That means he, we want to find it out, a ticket price which maximizes his profit. So basically his profit is income minus expenditure. So his income is a function of attendees multiplied by the ticket price, you understand that. So his expenditure is different. His expenditure is basically has two factors. One is a cost fixed value and the other one is the variable value. So basically every performance cost has a fixed cost 500 rupees and each attendees cost another three rupees. So for example, if 100 attendees in the show, so 100 into three, 300 rupees, plus 500 is, is that is income. So that 800 is, is sorry, is, uh, is uh, uh, expenditure is 500 plus 300, that is 800 is expenditure. His income is then, uh, let's say uh, 20, no? if 100 attendees means 20 rupees the ticket price, then 20 into 100 is the income. So then income minus expenditure is, is profit. So I'm asking you to write some program to find it out what would be the best ticket price which maxim, uh, maximize his income. So how many functions we can identify there? So I will give you a help so you can identify several functions there.
So first of all, we can identify an income function. Income function has, income function is what? Inside the income function, you need to calculate the income. That is gigat price into number of items. Then you have to write function to calculate the expenditure. Expenditure function as a fixed cost, that is 500 plus ticket price into the number of attendees, right? So then there should be a function to calculate profit. This profit function is income minus expenditure, right? Then obviously you need to find, write a function to find it out number of attendees. So there should be a function for number of attendees. Number of attendees function take the ticket price as the input and return how many attendees. So for that you need to implement a number of attendee function. So that determine how many attendees. So those attendees can number of attendees can pass into the income and expenditure function. Then there we can calculate the profit. I think you understand what I mean. So you have a big problem. So it is kind of look like very complex. So you carefully read that. So I will, I already discussed how you could divide that big problem into a small set of functions. So those functions then, you can implement it in C and then you can call the function profit in your main function in the C program and find it out the profit at each ticket price. So there you can find it out the best ticket price to maximize, maximize his profit. Okay, so, so you write this yourself and submit to the JIT. Uh, so uh, as I discussed, so here is the functions we want to think about. One is the profit is different between revenue or income and the cost, that is revenue and expenditure, income and the cost. Uh, and then revenue is exclusively generated by sales, so it is a product of ticket price and number of attendees, as I mentioned, and the cost consists of two parts, the fixed cost and the variable cost. And finally, the problem statement, actually, uh, final problem statement is the attendees, attendees depend on the ticket price. So if you can write those functions, so you could solve this big problem. Okay, as I mentioned, you solve it as a, a activity of this session uh, and upload to the JIT. So I, under I hope you understood the benefits of dividing a problem into a small set of functions uh, when you are implementing programs or when you are solving problems. So when you're solving problems in computer science, the, you should learn how to divide these big problems into a small set of functions. So then you implement those small functions and then put them together to solve the big problem. So that's how we write complex programs to solve complex problems. Okay, thank you very much. And that's it for the day.